once again, we welcome you to our event tonight. Have you enjoyed the food? I want to thank Jose for putting this meal together for us. Thank you very much. Very enjoyable. If you talk to him, you might even be able to get some cornbread to take home or something. So we'll see. All right. We really want to thank Dr. Holm for his work in putting tonight's presentation together. We are looking forward to learning more about this new epidemic called monkeypox. I'm going to turn the time over to you. And again, thank you so much for, for being here with us. Hey, Pastor Bays. Um, we're kind of getting restarted on our health series. Um, and the first Thursday of each month, we plan on doing a health talk. I may not do all of them, but um, we have a committee that's working together. And the best news I had was when Jose said he would help with the meals. That was always, always an unknown what we were going to have and who's going to help. So that was good news. And, you know, we are here welcoming you tonight. They're part of the committee. And we also have Ivana as part of the committee. So we're going to be trying to work as a team to kind of bring some things in t that are interesting to you and other people that you might um, invite. There's an exercise group that meets here a couple times a week. And our lady, I don't know her name, but she's walking away. She's part of that exercise group. And we heard about this last time, too. This is the second thing. Um, you know, when they asked me what to talk about, I knew nothing about monkeypox. And if you look at your handout, and I'm just going to cover the first two inches on my handout. So there's some more on the table if you don't have one. But I'm going to go through like the first third. Then we'll go watch some pictures. Then we'll come back and answer some of the questions. But part of the challenge is I think we're all more or less tired of living under the COVID epidemic. And I, <laughs> I don't want to hear about any more <laughs> epidemics because I don't want to <laughs> have to listen to the commentators talk about it and trying to scare the daylights out of us all the time. So we survived it. And so I thought monkeypox, you gotta be serious, you know? And what I found out and I'll share with you tonight is it's certainly not near the uh, catastrophe that COVID was. And it can be avoided and it can be treated and there's already vaccines that work because the same vaccine for smallpox works for monkeypox. So it's already, things are lined up. So we shouldn't get out of control like the last time and isn't spread by just asymptomatic people walking by you. I mean, I think half the people got COVID don't know who they got it from. <laughs> so th that is the challenge. So here on your handout, I just wanna briefly cover the history. It was first discovered in monkeys in Africa in 1958. But the actual place that most of the virus live is in rodents and rats, not in monkeys. But it got started because someone studied it and saw it first pop up in these monkeys that ate crab. And so that was way back in 1958. And then and by 1970, they start seeing humans spreading monkeypox in Africa. And there's two parts of this, um, the central part of Africa and then the western part of Africa. And I'll show you a picture later. And um, it got started in humans there, but it was mostly um, a respiratory thing that was spread between people or they touched the pox and got it from touching it. Um, or they got it from an animal. So by 2003, it was first described in humans in the United States. So if you look at that, that is 33 years later, right? If I do my math. So it was a long time we, it gets started and then first showing up in um, the United States. And oops, wrong number. In 2018, they described the breakout in the UK United Kingdom, Singapore, which was at one time a, a 
place that was um, the British had settled, and then also in Israel. So they began noticing there was something happening. And then this year, 2022, is when Monkey Shot became known here in our country and began to get the politicians excited and started telling us the next great big disaster coming is going to be monkeypox and we better put everybody better get themselves ready for this. Um, so let's go to the pictures here. I got a lot of my information from Dr. Schultz. He is a Loma Linda physician, but he also works at, at uh, Riverside. And he did a lot of COVID presentations on YouTube. And he's done at least four on monkeypox. So I looked one of them was like two weeks ago, so I got a lot of the information from there. So this is to just remind you, you know, at first I thought, oh, they've got to be serious. Talk about another epidemic. <laughs> and then I thought, no, it can't be. It's just the hype. And so this is just to show, yeah, when you see it, then you go, it kind of wakes you up. And this is showing the pox on the hands on the right, on your left. And the virus itself is here under the, in the skin. And here's the electron microscope picture of the virus. Now, the virus is related to the same virus that does chicken pox and smallpox. It comes from the same family. And they're good thing about that is the vaccination for smallpox was working so that you didn't have to go through the big process of figuring out the virus and the what that you needed to uh, present come up with a vaccine now i'm going to spend a little time talking about dna maybe that doesn't matter to you but I'm like yes i want to talk The reason it's important to know that it's a DNA virus is the COVID virus is an RNA virus and it can change its coat and its colors and its sequence very rapidly. This DNA virus is really big and um, the, d the fact that it's a DNA, it takes a lot more effort to change it into a new variant. So it tends to be more stable as far as the virus itself. Um, now this is the map I wanted you to kind of look at. The Central African version here um, is far more virulent and there's a 10% death rate. Now you have to realize some of these people aren't well fed and some of them are poor nutrition. So maybe they're healthcare is kind of miserable and sometimes sanitation is miserable. So that was um, much more a higher death rate in this group. And then the one that we're part of, or the United States is, came from Nigeria and it is a 1 to 3 percent death rate. S still l a lot, but not quite like COVID where we lost several members of this church to COVID. So um, this is something we may, we may talk about a little bit more, but it actually is not from monkeys. <laughs> the, the first time they found it was in monkeys, but it's actually a misnomer since it's mostly found in rats and African mammals. And um, again, discovered in 1958, and it was found in some lab animals. And at this this version of it spread mostly by respiratory droplets, but it says transmission is generally low. Somebody has estimated that you have to be in the same room closer than six feet for three hours in order to pick up enough of the virus to, to get you. So it's not just walking, accidentally walking by somebody in the supermarket and getting it. No, it's not spread that way. 
I didn't know what these monkeys looked like, so I went to the internet and I found that it obviously a macaque, macaque, and uh, this is the monkey that they first discovered it in. And then DNA. Um, for those of you that had a little science background, DNA stands for deoxyribo, and it's a double he helix where it's, the, it's uh, th they're joined together, whereas RNA is a single strand. So that's what I was saying earlier. The DNA is a complex, and this virus is much uh, more stable than this one here, which the COVID virus was. Um, for those that haven't had biochemistry in a while, the thymine and uh, there's a pattern. The yellow and the red go together, and this one and this one go together. So they're, they're matched all the way around. And just for a review, just, just read the underlying part. DNA is a storage device. So those of you that have flash drives know what that's like. And our nucleus is like a flash drive. The information from your mom and dad are still stored in there. And they're passed between, um, this blueprint can be passed between the, your next generation. So RNA, is the way that the hard drive is read. So it's called a messenger RNA, and it goes to the nucleus and gets its information and passes it back. And the, the transfer goes out and gets proteins that are needed to build the next uh, device that we're working on. And then the third one is called ribosomal RNA. So these three kinds of RNA are working with the DNA in order to pass on the information. So that was my highlight. <laughs> Sorry for you guys, <laughs> not a highlight. This is um, the confirmed number of cases. And up until August 6, they were having 800 new cases a day around the world. And I think it's still continuing at about that rate. And so in the world, there had been 30,000. And I wrote it on your handout here tonight. It's up to 38 and 19, 38,019 as of yesterday. So it's still uh, active and moving and still increasing in numbers. And then this map here shows the 30,000. It's uh, a couple weeks old. And you can see United States up here and Spain up here. And this is keeping track of the world epidemic of this monkeypox virus. Now, just to bring it closer, um, there's people that go out into the sewer and measure this virus to find out if it's in the community. So even if they don't see it in a person or a patient, they're finding it in the community. So. This doesn't show up very well, but this is California. That's Sacramento. I can't hardly read it. And uh, yeah, San Francisco, Palo Alto, Sacramento. So there, do you see these little spikes? They're finding that virus in the sewage. So don't think it's just over there in Africa somewhere. It's in our backyard. And then this was from yesterday. Steve uh, mentioned to me on Tuesday that there had been a death because there hadn't been any deaths in the United States until the 30th. So this was the first confirmed death from monkeypox. The thing is, they tell you uh, this kind of scenario, and you think, oh, no, the virus is getting worse. But the thing is, this was a very immune-compromised, weak person. So for him to have something bad happen isn't a surprise. Okay, just a little bit about 2003, going back in history, because this was the first time it showed up in the United States. And the thing that I want you to see here is they found 34 cases, and they found out that three of them had been vaccinated. So they were hoping 
that if you were vaccinated years ago, because they haven't been doing smallpox for quite a while, I think it's 1970 or something like that, that th they were hoping that that would show uh, they were still protected from monkeypox. But there was still three out of, you know, th three out of 34 uh, end up having had vaccination. So it didn't really protect uh, them very much. Now, this is past vaccination versus in the we're going to talk about future vaccination. So 97% um, had rash and headache and lymph nodes and fever. So the common thing about this is fever for two or three days before you break out with the rash. So now, this is, I mentioned earlier, the virus we're dealing with now is one that was found in Singapore, in the UK, and Israel in 2018 and 2019. Hasn't changed much in those three years, which is actually good news. So this is the, um, the latest review of the epidemic in 2022. So this is from information from April and June this year. And they had 528 infections in 16 countries. So it isn't just located in the US or Africa, it's around the world. The thing that is very much in your face is that this, at this time, it's mainly um, gay and bisexual men that are passing this around in their communities. So 98% of them were gay. 75% were white. HIV, um, this is important because HIV tends to lower your immune system. And 41% of these patients had HIV. What we look at is this cell count. If it's above 200, you usually don't get um, severe infections. If it's below 200, you get all sorts of infections. So they're always checking your CD4 if you are an HIV patient that's taking treatment. So they got it, uh, the monkeypox in, in spite of the fact that their CD4 levels were higher than usual for an HIV patient. Okay, and 9% of them had had a smallpox vaccination in the past. So it wasn't, you know, the, they wasn't protecting everybody that had the vaccination. And it, the signs and symptoms are similar to the 2003. Many of them have fever. What's unusual with monkeypox is lymph nodes get enlarged, whereas with smallpox, and chicken pox, with the ones that we dealt with for m many years as pediatricians, they don't usually have lymph nodes. But they have headache and myalgia, so it's basically feel like you're coming down with the flu, where you have fever and ch chills and headache and just feel miserable. And then you break out with a rash. And 95% of them had a rash, which is good news in a way because that's only like four or five percent that didn't have a rash. So you can tell who's, who has the disease because they have the rash. So you can stay away. You can take, you know, you can do the um, important things to isolate them, keep them from spreading it around. And then um, because the men that have sex with men tend to have anal sex, this group had 73% of them had lesions in that area. So it's, um, the reason this word syphilis is here is that we usually look at those areas of your body when we're looking for syphilis. So this one can trick you. It might not be syphilis, it might be monkeypox. And then 29 out of 32 had this pox DNA in the seminal fluid. So in the male ejaculate, there was virus. So if you, I'm going to ask you the question tonight, how to avoid this, and I think it becomes obvious. Um, so this is a vesicle, which is a little bleb with fluid in it, and then it forms one pustule, has a little bit of pus in it, and then it tends to umbilicate, turn in like a belly button, and then it ulcerates, and it gradually, as it heals, forms a crust, 
and then the scab comes off and it peels off. So that's the natural sort of course of the pox. Now, the good thing is most people recover whether they get special treatment or not. So the, the good news is it isn't like people are on respirators and they're dying with all these oxygen depletion and uh, terrible courses in intensive care. Most of them with supportive care, meaning giving them fluids and keeping them, um, keeping their nutrition up, they are able to recover without having to have anything special. Um, this is a, the Curvamat is a antiviral that was approved in July of 2018. And then there's another one here called Brickinville, 200 milligrams once a week for two doses. This was approved in June of 21. So there's two different antiviral, but the problem I need to tell you is very hard to get because they're kind of saving it, hoping you know, that, you know, they'll use it on the more severe cases. So you have to get special permission to get, the, get it, but they're not making you wait very long. You can actually, if you think you have a case, you can call this number and they'll send the medicine. But it, has, it isn't like there's a big supply of it. It's, it's uh, being protected. Okay, so this is the course from a review in the New England Journal of Medicine. And only 5% needed this antiviral medicine. Some were admitted, 13% were admitted, some for pain management, some because they had super infection, in other words, bacteria got into these wounds, and some were kept in the hospital just because they wanted to I keep them isolated. They didn't want them out and running around. So you can see there were no deaths at all in these uh, group of people, even with 70 of them being admitted, I mean, 70 of them being admitted to the hospital, there were still no deaths. Okay, now, you can take the virus medicine, but most people recover without needing it. Uh, if you have a severe, severe case, you then could probably qualify to get the antiviral. But how about those that don't have the disease but were exposed and know they're ex exposed? What are you going to do for them? And you can use this vaccinia immune globulin. It's, it's antibodies that have been made in somebody else or artificially made so that it can fight the virus. So if you know you've been exposed and you're the person that you were with has it and there's a long uh, likelihood that you've gotten it, then you can get this immune globulin. And then there is a vaccine that up to 14 days after you've been exposed you can use called Genos. It's actually a smallpox vaccin vaccine that's been improved on um, this is a little bit medical, but this other one called ACAM 2000, actually it's like the old smallpox. You remember getting smallpox vaccination? You used to take a needle and poke it in about 10 times, and you would actually get a crusty lesion. You would actually get the dis you get a pox where they gave you the shot. Well, this one does that, this ACAM 2000, and this new improved one, Genos, does not give you a pox. So it's actually probably a little safer. All right. There's still about two slides, but it's not moving. Okay, I don't know what, what got it stuck. I got the pox, probably. So this Genos is the best one, and then this is just to show you what the government gets involved. They ordered 13 million freeze-dried monkeypox vaccines so that we would all be protected. Um, I want to focus on transmission because if you understand transmission, then you'll understand how to avoid it, and you know how to advise other people as well. But you can get it from humans by touching the sores. About 13 days or so later, you may break out with the sores. 
you can get it from uh, body fluids and touching clothing. So if you're sharing a bed, you might get that pox virus in the bedding. And then respiratory droplets are, I mentioned earlier, you have to be three hours and closer than six feet in order for that virus. It's, it does not uh, spread very much in respiratory droplet. You can get it from animals, and this is the way it was spread in Africa. And uh, if an animal bit you or you ate the, you know, don't tell Jose about <laughs> eating this kind of uh, meat because it's <laughs> I'm not interested. Um, this is um, kind of a medical slide to tell you how the virus is spread. And I'll just summarize it. The further to the left you are, the, mo the, more the stronger the virus is. So this right here is a skin lesion. And they took a swab and swabbed the skin lesion. And it is, has the highest viral load. So it is the most contagious here. Well, as respiratory, when they took a swab in your nose or in your throat, it's all the way over here. So it's much more, it's stronger you get a more likely to get it from the lesion than you are from the respiratory. And down here is um, the area where men have sex with men, and they're the ones that have the problem in their rectum. So that's really uh, sort of unique to that group of people. So this is in summary. PCR we know from having our COVID test. We found that viral load in the lesion was significantly higher in the pharyngeal swabs. Oh, so I, I read it wrong. The lesions were higher than the pharyngeal swabs. Although imprecise, these findings consistent with the viral load more than three orders. Now, Dr. Schultz says that three orders is not three times. It's actually a thousand times higher magnitude compared to respiratory. So um, it says, in observation together with localization of the lesion, the history and the concurrent transmission infection suggest that close contact during sex is the dominant form of monkeypox transmission in the current outbreak. So it's, um, you know, it's kind of, the Bible has some instruction about whether we should be having relations with people we're not married to. And it also has instructions about what happens when we wander away from God. And we begin to start putting our emphasis on things that are harmful. And so sex between men is not natural. It's not the way God designed it. And I put a text down here if you want to read it later, Romans 1, 26, it says, because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. So that's taken from Romans 1, 24. And these people, I think, have wandered away, don't realize that God has given us this instruction. So we want them to be uh, protected from this, and we need to focus the attention on prevention to these people that are having this lifestyle, but we need to do it in a kind and gentle way. God loves them. So we don't want to point a finger at them, but we also want people to know there is a way of protecting yourself. So in the UK, most of them were, uh, most of the cases were in, gay and bisexual men. So they decided to advise gay and bisexual men to be aware of unusual rashes or lesions. So right now the epidemic is focused on this group to be sure that they are um, given the right information. In fact, Dr. Schultz said he's had a gay and lesbian call him up and thank him for being up front with how to protect themselves. So they, they're thankful for the information. 
Now, this is one case that sticks out because this is a doctor that was working in a hospital and he got it and he didn't have any sexual relations with anybody. So just to remind us, this disease started in monkeys, spread to animals, animals to humans, and now it's in this group of people. It could change. It's not an African disease. It's not just a gay uh, men's disease. It, it is a virus that can potentially change. So this is just to keep, keep us focused and to realize we don't know it all just because we had one lecture. Keep, keep tuned because things can change. Um, how many of you are pediatricians? <laughs> this is just, um, I had to go back and look at what chicken pox and, and smallpox were, and I won't spend a lot of time on this, but it's just telling you the difference between the rash in this and in um, chicken pox, which has been around for quite a while and doesn't scare us very much. The worst thing about chicken pox is when you have a reactivation of the virus later and you get something called shingles, and it lights a fire in your nerve where that chicken pox was, and it will be, it, it, it is miserable pain. So that's the worst thing about chicken pox is the pain complication later. And smallpox has been basically eradicated. But a couple of things about monkey pox is it's found on the palms as well as on the feet, on the soles. And chicken pox is not and neither is smallpox. So that's one little differentiation is the fact that it's not on the palms, it is on the palms and soles. And then um, I, I mentioned earlier that the death here, is it says one to 10%. Well, it's 10% in one group of virus, but most of them it's, l it's much less than that. Okay. I was gonna ask you to fill in the blanks on this one. What, what, what do you do to prevent or what would you tell somebody that wanted to be sure they never got monkey pox? I think, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious that the lifestyle of the men that are, that are passing this on between them, that is one you want to avoid. Um, the other thing is if you do happen to see somebody with a rash like that, you can get it from their rash. So the same thing we would tell you to do if you have someone had the flu. So um, cover your mouth, stop resisting, wear a mask, all these things and wash your hands and it should be for at least 20 seconds. So if you do have contact with somebody with a rash, it's a good idea to be Careful. I saw your hand go up. <laughs> Potentially you could. So I mean it's not it's not spread very easily by droplets, but it's possible for the fluids to be there. <laughs> yes, Ivana. Yeah, I, I didn't um, run into the exact number. I know we had with COVID, we had like all sorts of numbers all over the place. So it's, it's, it's not the primary way you're gonna get it. And then my last part here is on how to build up your immune system and many of you, yes, Barb. Right. Once, once it's, yes. Once it's scabbed over and hard and dry, it's no, it's not near as contagious. It's pro you're probably going to, it's not going to get contagious at all. So once it's dry, you're. We used to let kids go back to school. They still may have scabs on them, but the, the lesions were not wet.
Yes, big difference because um, the, the likelihood that you're going to get it is very slim from just the, the secretions. Okay, I just brought this up because of the focus is on treating and yet the best thing to do is for all of us to be have our immune systems up to speed because we're being protected all the time from different viruses here and there. We're, they're just not in the news. So um, I put on your notebook here these websites that are on YouTube because these are brand new. Just since July, they've all been redone. So I watched the one on nutrition. It was very good. Uh, it w and then I just wrote down the one on exercise and water, but the one for trust was just finished two weeks ago. I didn't get a chance to look at that, but if you go to YouTube and you look for um, New Start Now, you can find those and find out what is important to do to keep your immune system up and running. I'm going to ask uh, just a few things here going down from the handout. Is it serious? My answer is in that, in, in, no, in most people, it's not serious. Is there approved treatment? Yes, there's approved treatment. Is there a vaccine? Yes, there's a vaccine. And how to avoid, we talked about that. Then a couple other things out there is, um, is it less of a concern compared to COVID? And I would say yes, at this point it certainly is. And the DNA virus is much harder to, to, break, to change into different variants. So even the smallpox vaccines from years ago are still working. And transmission is more by direct contact, not spread by asymptomatic patients. I'm just comparing this with COVID because people with COVID could not even be sick and they're passing it around. So it's hard to stop an epidemic if you don't know who's sick and who is. And uh, there's already vaccines available. Death rate is less than 1% and long-term sequelae are not commonly reported. So it isn't like you have this chronic fatigue that some of the uh, COVID patients have where they're still struggling months later. They're still super tired. Um, quickly, a couple questions. Is there a better name? Ted, this is directed toward you because you asked me. Is there a better name for monkeypox? <laughs> You know, it's, it's not really from monkeys. Does it help us decide? It's kind of a funny name, so it does get our attention. Uh, some people decide that just shorten it to mpox so that they're not picking on any particular monkey that way. So there's people out there suggesting that we change the name. And then the other thing is whether it's a sexually transmitted disease. For those that work with people in primary care, those that come in to you with discharge and problems with uh, diseases they got s from sexual contact. And we call them STDs. And that helps you focus, so you check all three of them. When they come in, you don't just check for one, you check for all three. So now the question is, is this better described as an STD? Because that's the group that are mainly uh, being uh, challenged with it now. But the truth is it may change. It may become something else. It may become a skin disease that's more common. So there's, there's this debate about whether to label it or to just um, keep our minds open. Because at one time it was considered a disease spread by animals in Africa. So one, at one time they called it a zoonosis because it came from uh, animals and eating animals. So anyway, those are questions that are out there. Further questions, I'm available. I'm sorry the talk was a, just a little too medical for me even, but it gives you a chance to review if you haven't talked about DNA and RNA for a while. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Jose, for um, fixing such a delightful meal. And our next talk is the 6th of October. And it's going to be on uh, supplements. What, what, 
what do we think about supplements? Are supplements good? Are supplements bad? What What is the consensus on supplements? So that we're going to talk about supplements in October. All right. Alan? I would like to thank Dr. Holm for this wonderful presentation tonight about monkeypox. And I want to thank everyone who has come uh, as well. And we hope to see you again at our, future, at, at our next event on October 6th. I want to have our closing prayer so we can officially end tonight. We thank you, Lord, for this time together here at the CFGSD Church and for our time together with Dinner with a Doctor and for enlightening Dr. Holm to present to us about this topic tonight, monkeypox. Lord, we pray for those who may have it, may they get treatment and may they be cured from it as soon as possible. And those of us who don't have it, may we make sure that we take the the steps to be free from it in the future. And now, Lord, as we prepare to go to our separate abodes, be with us in our, in our cars, as we drive home, and may we be ready to do whatever happens for tomorrow for work or for school, whatever we have to do. Bless us as we leave, we pray. In Jesus' name, we all sit together. Amen.